Hey there, just a quick demo of how to fade a, an image in on Visi. Uh, it's not the best editor I know, it's got lots of little glitches, but it is possible to do these things, so I figured I'd show you. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I've just loaded Visi up here, and this is the default profile that it loaded. Uh, I believe it loads a random one every time you start up scratch, from scratch, so uh, don't worry if you have a slightly different one. It'll have the same elements in it. So we'll just go ahead and we hit play, see what it looks like. And turn the background on. Yeah, and anyway, that's that's pretty much always the default. So all we're going to do is going to create an, a new layer, add an image to the layer, and then fade that image in at a certain time. So you generally want to put uh, related concepts in their own layers. It just makes it easier to move things around. Uh, right now, these are the, the default layers. Uh, despite the fact that the names look like they have meaning, they don't. So, you know, 2D Visualizer's layer contains the 2D spectrum, which is the sphere thing. Um, 3D Visualizer's contain 3D particles, which I don't see any in this animation, but uh, I wasn't really paying attention. And background layer contains the picture, of course. So we're just going to create a new layer. Click here. And that creates an unnamed layer name everything as often as you can because this editor gets confusing fast with all the unnamed stuff. I'm going to call it logo layer. And then we're just going to add an image to that. Go to 2D because we want a 2D. You can leave it on all and find it as well. There's a search, but I'm just going to go 2D because I know it's here. Uh, image, there we go. And then when you've got it selected over on this side, you'll see the uh, config file. And I'm just going to drag an image into that drag and drop box. OK. And you see right off the bat, it's way too big. So you come in to transform for your sizing. That lets you set position, rotation, and scale. Some awesome information that's useful. Um, the trick with rotation, of course, is this is a 3D rotation. So X and Y fade it into the background. only. The uh, Z is you know, 2D rotation. I'll show you that in a sec. Let's get the scale down. Um, with all the numbers in Visi, you can sort of just hold the mouse and drag to resize. But it's really tricky to do anything useful with the scale that way. So I prefer to just type the number. And I'm going to go to 10%. So that would be 0 0.1. And you have to do each one individually, unfortunately. Uh, Z axis probably doesn't matter because that's the one into the screen. But hey. Uh, I promised I'd show you the uh, oops. Promised I'd show you the rotation, so I just hover over the Z rotation, and if I just drag it, you can see it spins. Let me uh, kick that back to zero. Uh, other thing I'm going to do is uh, let's see here. I want to put it behind the 3D visualizers if there are any. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag it just above the background layer. There we go. So you can see it's hiding back there, although. It's also behind the 2D visualizer, so I think I'll move the 2D visualizer behind it. There we go. Now, of course, if I just hit play, well, pretty straightforward, yeah. So let's say we want this to start to fade in at 10 seconds and take 5 seconds to fade in. So the first thing we do is we're going to... Uh, to sit here and make sure we have the image selected so that we have access to the config panel over here. And we're going to um, minimize transform, open color. And the one we're interested in is alpha. So an alpha of 1 is solid, and an alpha of 0 is transparent. Um, add just lets you put a fixed value on that. We won't need alpha. So first thing we do is just hit stop to make sure we're at the 0 point and click this little diamond to record an animation spot. Um, now, of course, that's just recorded it at 1, which we don't want. So let me kick that down to 0. And you'll see keyframe added, so it's updated that for us. Now we're going to kick our way over to 10 seconds on, by clicking on the timeline. We don't have to be exact. We can make the numbers exact later. And here at 10 seconds, what I'm going to do is just set the 0 again. Whoops. Uh, how did I do this before? Whoops. Well, <laughs> that's one way. Change the value and change it back. Anyway, 
I want a second keyframe here. The reason is, is to make sure that it's very predictable what happens in this gap here. I want to make sure it starts at zero and stays zero up until this point. So I definitely want a keyframe at both spots. But once I've got that, now I just kick ahead five more seconds. So I'm going up to 15, uh, somewhere around here. Again, I don't have to be exact. And I'm just going to kick the multiply up to one. But I just <laughs> dragged it with the mouse across it. And you saw a keyframe added, and now we've got that. And so now we can actually scrub in the timeline here and watch it happen. So nothing, nothing. We hit 10, and then it starts to fade in. And at 15, it's fully faded. So we can also just go ahead and hit play and see that live. OK. Now let's go ahead and say we, we know the exact timestamps we want. So we want to fix up the timestamps. So we just come over here into automations. And this will show us everything that's been added. So this is the default stuff. We're not going to worry about that at all. And these are the three that we've added. So one, two, three, uh, I think. We're going to find out. So I'm going to expand them all. This is where it gets really confusing, because they're added in the background. You don't get a chance to name them. So you got to kind of figure out which is which. And it's not as hard as it seems. If we just click up here, then this frame will update with which one we're looking at. Definitely, you want to come in here and rename things before you have a lot of them, because when you start getting overlapping effects, it gets really hard to figure out which one's which. So anyway, in here, you can see there's a start value and a target value. So you know what does it transition between, what time it starts, and what time it ends. And then interpolation is the type of curve that it uses. Don't be too worried about that unless you're not happy with the way the fade works. So in this case, we can see, OK, so from 9 seconds to 15, that's the fade in, most likely. And it looks like it might have colored it for us, which is handy. Yeah, it did. OK, so this is our initial one from 0 to 0, from 0 to 10. So I don't know what this one is. Uh, this is up on this line here. Interesting, 1 to 0. I don't even know what that one is. That one might be a glitch. Let's go ahead and just, we don't know what that is, so let's go ahead and nuke it. Save a little rendering time. Visi can get really slow when you have a lot of layers. So anything you're not using, clean it up. Anyway, so this is the, the start time. So whoops. Um, you can't always right click to rename. Sometimes you have to find this text button. It's a little confusing. So uh, logo idle. That means that this one is logo fade in. This way, when the project gets more complicated, I know what they are. <laughs> anyway, so local idle, we know that we want the end time to be 10 seconds. So we can just come over here and fix that. And then fade in, we know 0 to run. 1, that's right. And we want from 10 to 15. OK, and that's it. It's, it's set. Now if we just hit play. And at exactly 10, it should start to fade in. There we go. And at exactly 15, it'll be done. Anyway, hope that helps. Whoosh.